What we're looking at is how pollution affects reproduction, not just mortality, but how populations are sustained. And what we're finding, because some of these pollutants are endocrine disruptors, are that many species, corals, fish, even marine mammals, seem to be having increased sterility problems, reproductive uh, management problems. So we're not seeing recruitment of young on coral reefs or new seagrass beds expanding. What we do see is a decrease in corals on coral reefs. We do not see young corals being recruited onto coral reefs in many places in the Caribbean and many places in the Indo-Pacific. We see this decline in recruitment closest to places where people live. So we're associating those with plastics that are in the ocean, plastics that come from wastewater uh, outputs. Um, we're associating with sewage. Um, in sewage and wastewater, you have a lot of pharmaceuticals, you have a lot of antibiotics, and you have a lot of hormones. Birth control pills um, are basically estrogens, and you can find huge levels of estrogens in the wastewater. They flow over coral reef, and they affect how corals reproduce. The antibiotics that we find in wastewater, sewage, um, come from both the drugs we take as well as the items that we eat. So we eat chicken, we eat uh, beef, we eat pork, and oftentimes, depending on the sources, these meats are loaded with antibiotics and they pass through us back into the wastewater and then into the environment. Water quality in developed countries such as the United States, Canada, has been well regulated, but populations are expanding in developing worlds, especially in the Caribbean and in Southeast Asia and Oceania. These places don't have the regulatory safeguards for wastewater that we see in developed countries. And we need to develop those regulatory safeguards because we know they work.